Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'm Mark Anderson. I'm the Director of Education at Domus Academy. I'm very pleased for your participation in, in the talk this evening, which is part of our part of the Disruptive Patterns Open Lecture Series. The lecture series includes panels, talks, and conversations that are multidisciplinary, cross-cultural, and connected, touching in various discipline areas from design to fashion, to innovation and technology. The emphasis is on alternative and investigatory approaches, processes, and contemporary and future themes. Looking at the past, investigating the present, preparing next strategies of engagement. With this brief, brief introduction, I'd like to welcome our very special guest, Mr. Umberto Campana, a founding partner in the design studio, Estudio Campana, that he established with his brother, Fernando. In fact, uh, more often the studio is, uh, is identified and you probably know it as their work as Campana Brothers. He is connecting with us directly from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Good evening, Umberto. Nice to see you again. For everyone involved in, in design, the work of the studio needs no introduction. Umberto and his brother have been an irreverent force in design world over the past 30 years, both being part of the design system and decidedly working outside of it, creating original thought-provoking work that ranges from architecture and interiors to fashion and landscape. While designing for some of the most important international brands and and, and, and uh, they have uh, exhibited their work from Milan to New York. Their identity has remained decidedly Brazilian with many projects connected to the territory. Proudly rooted in the Brazilian culture and traditions, their work carries universal values to its core, such as freedom, human dignity, through the search of identity from life experiences. Their creative processes raises materials to nobility bringing not only creativity to design, but also the Brazilian characteristics, the colors, the mixtures, the creative chaos, the triumph of simple solutions in an artistic and poetic way. Campana pieces are part of permanent collections of renowned cultural institutions around the world, such as Centre Pompidou, Musée des Arts Decoratifs of Parigi, MoMA in New York, the Museum of Modern Art São Paulo, and Vitro Design Museum. With no further ado, I'd like to leave the stage to Umberto and our longtime collaborator and journalist, Caterina Lungri, who will be conversing with Umberto and posing questions to our guests. So thank you again. Welcome. Ciao, Mark. Ciao, Umberto. Umberto, Ciao. I'm connecting uh, from uh, Palazzo Mondadori outside Milano by Oscar Niemeyer. It's going to rain in one second, but... Uh, we would like to pay homage uh, and honor you and Brazil. So you came here to visit me because uh, I work for Domus, but also I work uh, for Rizzoli Books uh, and uh, Mondadori. This is the quarter uh, of, uh, let's say, our publishing house. You came here uh, a couple of years ago. We had lunch. Uh, so I'm here just, uh, I think, I hope that is something that you might like. <laughs> and. Uh, I remember that you met Oscar Niemeyer in your life, right? Exactly. Uh, we met him, we visited him, his studio in Rio de Janeiro, I guess two, two years before his pass away. It's such an amazing place in, overlooking the face in the Bahia de Guanabara. Looks like a flowing saucer. So beautiful, black and white, all rounded. It's amazing. We sit in the sofas, just looking the ocean and the islands. So beautiful. And he was such a generous person. Amazing, <laughs> humble, uh, human, human. You know, it was, I was very honored to meet him. Uh, uh, Umberto, you are also very generous and humble uh, too. I, I can confirm that because we have a, a kind of friendship. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Umberto, I'm going upstairs, so I'm going to get uh, to my desk uh, and I leave you the, the word. Thank you for accepting our invite uh, and uh, 
I, I can't wait to hear uh, your lecture, to listen to your lecture and speech. See you in a bit. See you. <laughs> ciao. Yes. Ciao, ciao. Can we start? Well, I, I, I'm very honored to be, I'm, I feel very honored to be speaking today for Domus, such a prestigious school in Milan, Domus Academy. Thank you for the invitation. Well, I would like to say that me and Fernando, we are storytellers. So I, I, wanna, I was a lawyer, you know, I, I didn't study design, neither architectural. So uh, I'm going to tell a little bit my, the, the story, how we started, where do we come from? Because to understand our work is important to, to explain to you where I, come, I came from, where I was born. So I was born in the countryside of Sao Paulo state, in a, in a place called Brotas, surrounded by rivers and waterfalls. And this river crossed the city. So I, when I was a kid, I learned how to swim in this river. There will be a, a small video, a short video. And, all, and the, this is the area, very beautiful. Uh, this is the river. Uh, can you put on? Yes, it's very empty, this place is amazing. So we grew up with this all waterfalls, 38 waterfalls surround the area. It's a beautiful, it's a paradise, two hours and a half from Sao Paulo. And the city is very, is a Greek agricultural, uh, lives from agriculture, monoculture, coffee, sugar cane. And there is also a, 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 a rod industry of fishing rods there. So during the day, people are used to place the bamboo facing the walls of, in, the, in the area. So inspired in this situation, we start to thinking about to, we can make chairs. So the materials are very important in our work. So everything starts from the material. The materials will say what he wants to be transformed into. So there is another example. We like to give new meanings to our red existed objects manufactured by the, the human. So a, a garden rose chair, we, we did some chairs, uh, this garden rose chairs, and one chair for Edra, a very important company that's part of our history. This is the anemone. This chair is very interesting because it's a bubble wrap. The, the, the material that wraps the embalages of the, those of, from, of chairs, and I'm going to tell you a little bit, a short story. One day we, 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 we did an exhibition in Rio de Janeiro and I sent this chair packed with bubble wrap. So when the next day when I got in Rio, the chair was completely destroyed. And I was, I told them, what you did? What, what happened to this? And they told them, no, we are looking for the chair. They thought the chair was, all this material, all this bubble wrap was protecting something. And it was very easy because it consists eight screws that pass uh, across the metal skeleton. It's very, the legs also are dismountable. So it's very easy to, to make, it, make it again. Another, oh, this is interesting. This is uh, ropes. One day, me and my brother, we bought a bunch of ropes in Sao Paulo here, near our studio, and, and we put on top of a table. I assume this bunch was on top of the table, it deconstructed in front of us. And me and Fernando, we looked to each other, wow, we want to do a chair that represents Brazil. You know, freedom, chaos, color, textures, so we created the Vermelha chair, the, this chair that was, is our first product produced in Italy. 
made in Italy, and Massimo Morosi, the art director of EDRA, saw this chair published in a book in America. So he, he wanted to produce this chair, but how to, to create a chair very chaotic. So he, he, he asked us, send, please send the project. But we didn't do a project. We sent a video. Meanwhile, I was weaving, and Fernando was making, taping myself. So it was, this is our start in, in Italy. And Umberto, I, I'm back, I'm here. The Vermeia chair was made in the 90s, but it's still uh, in production, right, with Edra. So it's a kind of uh, lo yes, long selling. It, yes, and it was interesting because when we did, we project this chair 1992 or 1993, people here in Brazil was used to tell us, oh, this is one of a kind, or we, we can do, do this, just a small series of this. And well, in 1998, Massimo Moroz uh, met us. So from 1998 until today, is a one of the best sellers of Edgar. And I'm very happy because it's still, you know, it's, it's became a hic icon of <laughs> Edra and also for us, you know, is our business card. <laughs> yeah, correct. Not, not the only one, not the only business card, because you have many business cards and uh, icons, let's say. Uh, this is also the, the Favela chair. It's produced by, by here in Sao Paulo by a German community in the south of Brazil, but it's, it's edited by Edra also. They bought from a German community, but you can imagine a German community doing a favela chair. It was so fun to explain them chaos, you know, how to make this so uh, uh, organic without rationality. It was tough in the beginning to for them understand this, this project. Also, this is a recent project that we, I, I did, it's a sculpture made of uh, threads. Uh, uh, when we started the, the pandemic, in order to spend my time, I, I started doing, weaving those threads in the, in the metal structure to create this vol volumetry of threads and colors. This is a recent project. But Umberto, during the pandemic last year, I remember that you also was collecting uh, magazines, say uh, you were drawing yes. a lot, right? Exactly, I did a series of um, collages. Uh, but, uh, because I, I didn't have I didn't have my space, you know. So I tried to transform my house in a studio of design. Uh, you we weaving this this structure as well, cutting magazines, domes, interne, early decor, paper, all those magazines, design magazines, because we have a, we have them in my, my house and studio, and we create a narrative of now, what was, was happening inside my brain. <sighs> this is another project, observing how plants grow in the viaducts, in the middle of the streets or walls, everywhere, they are people don't plant them. They just go there seeds. Observing this, we create a series of panels of, of vertical garden. This is one of these. I imagine that the these are uh, um, terracotta rocks, very light. There is a metal grid that holds all the the terracotta against uh, 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 a wood panel. But these are, we have the idea to do this in external areas where the seeds would, the wind will bring seeds and uh, birds, the rain. So is it, would we imagine those plants growing in these islands. These are for acoustic, but we have the idea to produce them against uh, metals, a metal stainless steel uh, shape, and to use this. And this is the project for a building using these structures. 
I want to do this project to test if this can happen, what is going to happen. This is also a project that we did last year. We made last year in area where we are, our studio is based, is full of uh, people throw away stereophone protection of TVs, computers. It's so beautiful that I ask the people from the studio to bring here myself also and to create furniture. So we brought it then, we make a moat and then we compress all then. And then I start to cave, you know, to, to create this sculpture shape in the, the, in the armchair. And then I cover with leather. There is another image. And it's all handmade. So there is all made by hands. It looks like, like gold, but it's not, or bronze. It's, I would say that is a fake diamond. I like to create this, you know, to bring very ordinary things to make them elegant with elegance, opulence, with very simple solutions. There is another video also, it's a shelf that I did also. There is a small video I'm gonna show to you. This is my studio here in Sao Paulo. All the parts of those. And then we cover also with leather and transform this. Another project. Put it this. Uh, this is interesting. I, I, I love those animals, you know. Since I was a kid, well, the first object that when we are kids, we receive our a plush, can be a, do, a, doll, a, a doll or a a, a bear or a lion. One day, it was the beginning of this century, me and Fernando were looking for to create a, an army chair without the traditional methods of upholstery. Up and there was a guy passing in front of our studio with a bunch of plush on top of his head. And also the same thing that happened with Vermelia chair. We look to each other and well, let's buy this all bunch of uh, uh, animals and create our chair. So we create a series of chairs uh, made out of plushes. And I like, I guess the message of this chair, there is a connection with affection, with love, because this brings memories of our, everyone's childhood. This is a project for Fendi houses. Beautiful. Karl Lagerfeld, he made especially the, those big, uh, big pillows from these elements. And we create this for Fendi. This is for a, a, an artist, calls American born calls that we created this collaboration also. I, I love, this is one of my favorite armchairs. It was produced, is produced by Edra, Massimo Morozzi, asked us one day to create a chair without any, any structure. So we went to Edra and we, around the area, Pisa, we bought a, lots of materials, uh, pieces of carpets, felt, EVA, rubber, and we, we insert all these mat materials on an elastic, uh, elastic to, to hold all these uh, materials, fabrics. And one day, one day to make a photo shooting in Edra, we saw the bottom of this chair like, looks like a cake. So we produced it, we are we inspired in this, we create a collection of sofas that we named it sushi. I'm gonna show several images from the same objects to, and how to color can transform an object into a different way. I love to work with colors. It's, it's a limited edition of the sofas that we create. It's produced here in our studio. 
And one of these pieces takes almost 40 days to, it's like to paint in a canvas. Also this, I love, I like, like Lina Bobardi. I, 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 she, she was one of the first to make Brazilians believe, you know, proud of the Brazilian popular culture. So we, there is a dance in Recife in the north of Brazil called Maracatu. The, you, the dancers use a big, a huge wig made of those, these elements, and they turn one. They, it's a beautiful dance. So, so inspiring this dance, what, we were invited by Louis Vuitton to be part of the first project of then Object Nomads. So we create, we ask to visit the ateliers of Louis Vuitton, and we all ask it to work with the uh, offcuts of Louis Vuitton. So we create this series of foldable cabinets that can be hanged. Also, I wanna show some projects with Louis Vuitton. It's a sofa. This was the last project for Milan two years ago. I remember this very well, Umberto. When I visited the, your show at Louis Vuitton in Milano during Salone del Mobile, I was with Nicola and Stefano and Cristina. Your room, Louis Vuitton, has many collaboration with other designer and international uh, artists. But I do remember very well your room because it was a, a blast, an explosion of colors. And, colors, and, yeah. Yeah. And yes. I think that you like color, that colors come from the exuberant uh, mood of Brazil, right? The chaos that you like and inspire you. And I guess what, this was the thing that uh, Louis Vuitton want to be connected, you know, to exuberance with colors, uh, happiness, because we, we come from a country very, very, with lots, very solar, you know, we don't have snow here. Uh, the, 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 the nature, the environment is so beautiful, so amazing. So we need to take care also of this here because it's been going the vessel so fast. And I try to make a portrait of all those beautiful things that I have in my country. I'm going to show Beto, some. If, my, if I might add, uh, you, uh, let's say, Brazil is the source of your inspiration, material, energy. But at the same time, uh, uh, you have been able to uh, take uh, Brazil to an international level. So there is also an international language, right? That uh, made you and uh, Fernando super uh, famous uh, and uh, also in Italy, in Europe, in the US. Uh, so it's Brazil, but uh, with uh, an international twist and uh, language. Uh, the big yeah, and this was interesting. Did uh, uh, Ma uh, Marco Romanelli, a journalist that was used to work for Domus, he came here in Sao Paulo in the last century, last century, it's crazy, uh, 1989, to make a speech and represent a series of works that we have done uh, that time. So he, he made an article you know, at Domus magazine saying this, that we have a, we, we create a, language, a Brazilian language that speaks, speaks international language. Good. So from these words, um, you know, we take those words like a mantra, you know, we start, oh, let's go this direction, you know. And he was one, a very important person in our career, like Massimo Morosi or Paul Antonelli. We have a very, I guess Italy was very, is very important, you know, because if it wasn't Italy, maybe we could stay here in Brazil being, an artist, you know, doing single pieces. So I, I think I, I, I must say very thank to Italy also, ah, as well. Maybe. And uh, also, I, I, I like also not to do just furniture. I'm very, me and Fernando, who are interested in explore different disciplines. I think this century is about making cross bridges between disciplines. 
this was a series of um, uh, costumes that we did for a ballet in New York, Triad Ballet, uh, inspired the Oscar Schlemmer. But we, we create our own version of this ballet. with very simple materials from Canal Street in New York. Paper, mirrors, plastic mirrors. And I guess from Broadway, New York, we go to Broadway way to <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> Those chairs are very popular all over Brazil. That was year of 2005 or seven, I don't remember. We create a utopy or a dystopy, <laughs> me and Fernando. We imagine a, the whole world covered with plastic and the nature born coming from the, growing from the plastic being a nutrient, the plastic being a nutrient for the nature. And we create, we ask a, a, an artisan that weaving, and we start weaving plastic chairs with wicker. So there is a series of works, all the in plastic. This is throwing away. I collect all these things in, in the shores here in Brazil, <laughs> the explosion of the plastic. Now, this is, this is a portrait of me and Fernando. I call, uh, we name it this chair, two brothers, dois irmãos, <laughs> very connected. <laughs> and this is a single sculpture. Nowadays, I'm, I'm exploring also my sculpture side, because when I started working with the hands, I was planning to be a sculptor. And Fernando has changed, because Fernando came, was an architect, he was, he was putting function into my sculptures. And nowadays, for 35 years, I start, me and him, we start doing singular projects, individual projects. And Umberto, uh, you, you are a sculptor, a designer, an artist, uh, but your background, I mean, you studied law, right? So yes. you, you, you made it by yourself uh, into the art and design world. Uh, it was, I didn't know when I was, I was so immature when I was growing, I was supposed to, to choose a, a profession that I didn't want to know, I didn't know what I was want to be. And it was the year of the dictature military here in Brazil, 70s, it was very heavy. So it was difficult to be an artist here, it was very, there was a problem. So I choose the easiest way, you know, a, a law school, but it was a, a big mistake, you know, five years. <laughs> then I finish, I give the diploma to my family and I told them I'm going to construct my life with my hands. So this was a, my beginning, you know, I want to be a sculptor. And you were very, and very also, brave to tell that to your parents and to try, right? To give it a try and... Uh... I yeah, think it's a nice uh, giveaway also for the students, right? To, to, to try and try, and then uh, at the end, uh, you might make it. Yeah. <laughs> How about it, that, Umberto? What is this? Uh, this is a oca. It's a Brazilian indigenous house. It is interesting because when I was a kid in the countryside, people asked me, what do you like to be when you grow up? I told, I was used to tell them, I want to live in Amazon. I want to be indigenous, to be indigenous. I, I remember seven years of age, I, I refused to use shoes. I was used to go to school without shoes, you know. 
And I, I was used to make my own toys also, construct houses on top of trees with bamboo, because this, this presence of nature, indigenous, was very strong in my mind. So nowadays, after 35 years, I'm doing some, I'm playing as indigenous, working with natural materials. So inspired in these houses, indigenous houses, I'm gonna show some projects, installations that we did in some museums or schools or houses, even though houses. This is the Vitra Design Museum, the Max Museum in Rome. Yeah. This is a project, a, a workshop that I did in, in Sweden with a group of students to create a, a jungle made out of Sweden, Swedish straw. I love this project. It's very tall. And this, also, this is the house of Lina Bobardi, Casa de Vidro here in Sao Paulo. It's, the house is all glass, it's beautiful. It's floating or in the middle of a jungle, a tropical jungle. So recently, two, three years ago, we were invited by the director, Valdik Jatoba, to, do, to make an installation inside the house. So inspired in Lina Bobardi, way of thinking, because she put a lot of imagination or work on vernacular architecture. So inspired in this, we created these columns made out of straw in order to dialogue with the florist around the house. My dog is barking here, sorry. What's the name of your dog? Dora. Dora. <laughs> she comes here every day in the studio. This is the only house that me and Fernando project for an Italian couple here that lives here in Brazil. And we, the house has a problem of uh, heating and noise. So we created this facade covered with the straw. It's, it's a kind of, a, for me, this represents a way to clean your soul from the pollution, the stress of big city. Once you emerge, you are emerging inside a vegetable, big, um, yes, organic material. I love this project. Well, this is our area here, some working station around us, our studio. And this is a, a guy, a worker, an artisan that restores tonde chairs, all, all types of chairs that has those uh, straw. So I, I, I asked him not to throw away those, those straws and to keep for me. And we create a collection named Detonado where we weave it again, pieces of straw, old chairs, weave it again with nylon and on top on these structures. I like to give meanings, you know, since our beginning, we like to give new meanings, you know, always resignifying re things, you know, I think this, this century is about doing this, you know, to review, try to, use, reuse, all those elements. We start doing this since in our beginning. And this is a series of works that started in Rome, inspired in by Roman Baroque. We create, a, I'm gonna show to you a series of work made out of bronze. It's a dystopic narrative where you mix uh, uh, contemporary objects with the bronze ornaments. Another. Umberto, uh, together we, we chose uh, the title of this lecture, Freedom of Design. And uh, I, I, do, I do like it and, and I think that is a perfect fit for your personality and your, uh, your spirit. You are also kind of, uh, you like disobedience. You are a kind of rebel, rebellious. And uh, I, I love this title, if you agree, because uh, freedom of design for you is uh, freedom of materials, of uh, uh, more humble materials, more uh, 
high-end materials, and then the freedom of your collaborations from uh, Louis Vuitton and the uh, artisans on the street, uh, right? From Friendy, you also did a cake for Agendaz, uh, Melissa Shoes, yeah. Vibram. So there is a rich variety of collaboration and uh, also typologies, right? Also in terms of uh, price of your products or your creations for the public. So uh -huh. are you agree with my, with this yes, uh, thought totally. about freedom? You know, totally, because, you know, if I wasn't, I love freedom, you know. For me, uh, the worst thing is to be, uh, inside a box. So that was the reason that I, I gave up law, you know. I didn't, I did, I saw myself inside the, uh, an office, you know, with suits. You know, I like freedom. I'm not, I have a nomad, nomadic soul. You know, for me, it's important to know people, to, you know, I'm very sensitive. Things happen from my stomach. You know, it's, it's serious, you know. I need to talk with people that inspires me. You know, then I, I, from that conversation, I start to make a translation into objects, yeah, you know, that, like that, Massimo Morosi. Yeah. That's why, Umberto, at the beginning, when you were uh, uh, remembering Oscar Niemeyer, I also said that you are very generous and humble because uh, I think you are very sensitive and you like uh, uh, to connect with people. Yeah, it's the only way that I, I know how to act, you know. And I you know, know that uh, you like uh, the concept of uh, disobediency, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I like to be, you know, I can, I, I'm very easy to be in a Louis Vuitton or, and also in a prison, work with prisoners, you know. For me, the, there is no distinction. It's, a, it's about a human being, you know, yeah. it's about true. I think it's important in my work to give, to show my truth, my inner truth. It's very important to all those objects that I have been doing is kind of a catharsis, cathars you know, because I want to make then anemic, giving soul to the, the objects. And it's things that happens affects me. I try to translate into objects. And once uh, you, you told me that you, love uh, traveling a lot i yes. so i think you miss, miss traveling uh, now and uh, like you your work is not uh, a commitment uh, but is a, a pleasure right you just said yes that. yeah you need to For me, I, I i'm very very blessed to work on this because i feel like always like a child child you know I do, doing those things is like to play in a kitten garden. You know, I, I try to see the world with the eyes of a child, you know, so we make things easier, you know, happiness. I, I don't like to sit in a table being rational. I go by the emotion, you know, very, I don't know how to explain this. You know? No, no, you are explaining very well and your work, uh, this presentation is a, uh... The, the best demonstration of uh, your uh, formamentis. These uh, those pieces is part now. There is an exhibition at Pompidou, uh, Max Pompidou, uh, Archibald face to face, and we created this series of uh, chandeliers expressing this moment that we are facing. You know, uh, kind of prison. The name of this chandelier is cativeiro, that means prison, prison. You know, I think this pandemic make us feeling prison, prisoners of this, this situation. And I try to express all this anger, all this dark side, you know, into those objects. Please. This is a bench made out of pirarucu fish. It's a, it's a, a project with an NGO in Amazon. Because normally, in the past, the people who live near the rivers, 
they were used to fish those fishes and throw away the skin. So we were contacted by an NGO that protects the fish as well the people that lives in Amazon to make kind of a living. So they ask them not to throw away, they treat the, the leather and now they are selling this. Those fishes, I would like to say that they're growing farms, fishing farms. So there is always a protection, you know, a control how, how many they should be fished. Uh, it's a very nice project and this beautiful skin. The fish is like a, so big, I guess one meter, two meters high from the Amazon rivers. This is part of also the dystopic narrative. Another. I casted the, the fish skin. And now there is, a, there is another part of our work. Uh, 11 years ago, me and Fernando, we created the Instituto Campana with the idea to promote social, uh, make, become the life of people better, you know, and also to preserve traditions, popular traditions that are disappearing. As you know, Brazil is like a continent can be so different from north to south, the center. So the, we are a hybrid country. We, we have the indigenous, the Afro, the Europeans, the Asiatics, the Middle Eastern. So it's a, it's a mixing pot of culture. And this institute, we have the idea to preserve all these manual traditions. So this is a series a work that we did with this community that makes dolls. And once we did make this chair, without the idea to promote their dolls or make their lives better, and we promote, we create this, it was published in the media here in Brazil. And it started to sell, increase their production. So from this experience, we created the, oh, design can change people's life. So we are, pro there is a, now some, I want to show some, uh, images from the objects that we are working with NGOs. This is an NGO that works with the wives of prisoners. We buy from them these uh, this toys and we manufacture them in our studio. This was made in a favela in Rio de Janeiro, the Rocinha, is a project for Lacoste. Lacoste once, uh, once asked us to create a limited edition of their polo. So we work with a community in at Rocinha, Copa Roca, where they stitched 2,000 crocodiles, the logo, in, in, into a, a polo. Another project, this was a, 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 a disaster that happened Five years ago here in Brazil, in Minas Gerais, a dam collapsed and the whole city dev devastated the whole city of Mariana. Killed rivers, animals, people, destroyed everything. It was so sad. So, you know, to see that the lack of control, the lack of, you know, how people see the environment here in Brazil. So we flew there. We want to create a, a, a brick with, the, with the, the terracotta from this disaster. But we didn't manage because it was lots of minerals, uh, uh, mercury, uh, uh, all kinds of materials that didn't make, fix the, the brick. So, but we, let, we say, let's keep on. We look for a, a, a fabric there so they produce these bricks and the parts of the sales of these bricks goes to the people from those disasters to construct their houses. And I like the hands, you know, like a, a symbol of resilient uh, stop doing this or giving a, 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 hand, in, a hand to people. I, this is another project that I do with 
the institute does makes with a group of people uh, in rehab. So another work with bricks, we, we ask them to create bricks, fruit bowls, we, we buy from them and we sell those objects and we give away to their house. I like it's important whenever we work with these communities, not to a workshop and then stop them. No, I like to keep going. So maintain their uh, self-esteem is very important. Nowadays with the pandemic, we are not acting anymore because it's very diff difficult to keep people together. But as soon as this stops, I want to go very more deeper. And this is one of the last two images I'm gonna to show to you. Is a, uh, is a work that we did with a, in collaboration with an artisan that lives in Pernambuco, Mr. Expedito Celeiro. He was, he's used to make sandals or clothing in leather. I love his iconography, you know, full of color, textures. It's so well made, so beautiful. And I invite him, would you like to create a series of work? We create the objects and you cover these objects with your imagination, with your universe. So it's a collaboration that we did with him and he covered with this iconography. And this is the end. Of, Super fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Umberto. Thank you. It was a pleasure to to listen to your uh, your memories uh, again and to to learn more. Every time uh, I meet you, there is uh, some even always something more that I can learn from you. No, I would like to thank you. I'm very happy to be talking with you because <laughs> you are a very generous person. I'm very connected emotionally. I'm like, a, I'm so, like Oscar Niemeyer, generous. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you have dogs as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> two, two dogs. dogs. Two dogs. Yeah. So Unfortunately, better. I would like to go to travel as soon. We, we are not possible to, to travel abroad. You know, but so, you are more than welcome to school. Eh? Also, school, Mark, Fabio, Sabina are more than welcome to visit us at Mondadori and to have lunch together here. Thank you. It's a short period of 40 minutes to explain so many stories, 35 years. So I have a, a lot of things more to tell, but Maybe Mark, it's impossible to. A second talk with Umberto, right? An episode two. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Umberto, for sharing some of your vision, your approach, and your work with us. Um, it would be great to have uh, another talk with you. It would be great to have a visit for you the next time you're in Italy. Absolutely. Um, you have an open invitation to come and, to come and see us, and it would be great to, to, to have you here. Um, I, I, I don't know if you have a, a couple more minutes. Maybe we can we could open up... Um, to some questions okay. from our students or from our guests. Um, if, uh, if anybody has any questions, if you want to put them in the chat, we will we'll try to have uh, Umberto um, uh, respond to them. And maybe um, uh, while people are thinking of questions or, or writing them down, maybe I can start off by asking a couple myself. Um, um, and, and probably the, my first question will be, a, a, around the, your inspiration, your identity, the identity of, of the work itself and your design process. Um, as part of my introduction, I mentioned that uh, your work is outside the system of design. Um, uh, and it certainly is in terms of the aesthetic approach. And, um, you know, it doesn't respond to the typical requirements of industrial produced furniture. Uh, but as you correctly identified, um, uh, much of your work uh, is within the design system or, or can, it was, has been made possible uh, because of the design companies that have been willing to, to, to take it, your, your creative work, uh, put it into production, and so that it actually becomes sort of industrially produced pieces, even if, even if on, a, 
on a somewhat more limited scale. Um, so my, my question is about your process in creating. Um, your process is very creative and um, it lends itself to almost one of a kind pieces, you know, individual pieces. Um, when you're creating pieces, do you, do, are you thinking that they are, they will multiply, that they can be produced again, or is that just, is that, is that come in a second moment? Uh, it comes in a second moment, you know, for me to, it's important to keep my brain, my soul calm in peace, you know, for me it's important to, well, I want to do, it's, a, it's much more like a, a therapy for me, a therapeutic to create, you know. I, I would see in this way, you know, because I need, I need to create things in order to maintain in, a, in peaceful, because my mind is so polluted, lots of things going on, so I need to keep my eyes focused into an object in order to have that peaceful moment. So, and then if it happens to be mass production or limited series is a second step. I, 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 the thing that I want to show is my true, what is happening inside me and try to connect with the things, you know, is, is this be going to pollute it so much? Is this going to help people, you know, is this going to keep traditions uh, alive? manual traditions. So then I say, yes, if it's kind of those way of things are, is okay. So I start the, pro the project, you know, uh, yeah. But it's very, I do for myself, uh, for me, I guess. That's the reason that very few companies work with me, you know, Edra because understands our process or Louis Vuitton or, because it's a it's limited editions. Edra, no, it's Edra's, they produces the chairs, the Vermelius produces. So I, 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 I think that um, at this point in your career, you are in a quite envious position. And I'm sure you'll, the occasions such as Louis Vuitton, they come and, and they ask you for a collaboration and they say, will you do a piece for us, correct? Yes, yeah, there is, we are working with them since the, 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 the collection of Objet Nomad. And for me, it's also an MBA to work with Louis Vuitton because it looks like a state, you know. All, all decisions go to one top to the other. So I learned a lot on this process. For instance, that cabinet made of stripes of leather, that there is a way of thinking, you know to put one color together with the other. It's not random like those sushi sofas that I do, I do here in the studio. No, there, there is a map of very control, you know? So it's a way to, I, I learned a lot working with a company like Louis, Louis Vuitton. Vuitton. And, and, and in that case, do, do they give you a lot of freedom? Is there, do they give you a brief or, or what, how's the process with them? If you can share some of that with us, that could be interesting. You know, I, 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 I'm working, then I say, oh, I want to show this to them, to Julia, the, the, the lady that is part of the project. And then if they, she, is, she's, uh, she, she likes, so we start a dialogue. So then another, another people group, join us in meetings, in Zooms, so grows, growing, and then stops uh, one month uh, because she needs to show to other people so until she has the final decision. So it's very, very, it's interesting to so, work. So there is, a, there is a dialogue with the company that becomes part of the process. Yes, yes, a dialogue all the time. A zipper, there is a meeting, you know, a Zoom, to put insert a zipper, it's, it's also tailoring everything. It's fantastic. Okay, thank you for that that feedback, that response. I see we have a couple questions from, uh, we have one from our student, uh, Omang, who asks, uh, what should be the relationship between material and aesthetics? 
um, especially in the age of experimental materials and sustainable composites. Um, so I, I think probably he's asking what's, what drives the aesthetics? Um, um, is it experimentation or is it a very sophisticated approach toward sustainable composites? You know, I think the materials will drive me. You know, the, I, I get a piece of material and he's going to drive me until, until the, the aesthetic. You know, for me, it's important to the material. You know, from things born, things like uh, Bruno Munar, you know, playing start to, to happen in things, you know, but, but always first is the material, how is going to react to my hands or the way that I'm going to construct it. I try to give a homage to materials, you know, for me it's paying homage to, to materials, to, to transform them, to be an alchemist, get a piece of uh, styrofoam and transform into a chair, a golden chair. You know? <laughs> The, the, uh, I appreciate like very much the project you showed this evening of the bookcase that was covered in the styrofoam bookcase that was covered in leather. It, be, it becomes when, you know, when it's, when it's covered, it, it transforms completely and it becomes a very magical object. So that, that's, that's a wonderful piece, but the, the, your attention to, to the materials and detail um, and how you're working the materials comes out in almost all your projects from the, the fish skin sofa. Um, and um, I remember uh, when I had the chance to come to your office, your atelier a couple of years ago when I was in San Paolo, you had uh, just shortly finished working on a, a series of cork um, furniture pieces. And that's so that the, the attention to the materials and how you're addressing them. And even, even the wall, even, even, even the, wall panel behind you uh, it's about the materials as well exactly yeah mm -hmm. I, I like oh. and today is very difficult because all the young students are working with such a incredible materials you know so you know for a while what I, I'm, now nowadays i'm not creating because you know i'm in a crisis you know i see so many good students doing such a beautiful project no, for a while, they, such a, what a beautiful material this guy created. So I, I taught myself, I need to do something, you know, but I, I'm in a crisis, you know. So, yeah, I, I'm doing other things nowadays, you know, planning okay. to do pavilions. I'm doing pavilions, big pavilions. Huh. Well, the, the, a question has come in from Sabine, which, which ties right into this, this, this discussion on materials. And she says, how can you transmit your love and your passion for materials to a new generation, uh, a generation that now is eating, as she says, is eating and sleeping technology. So how, how can you, how can um, you, or how can a student be inspired uh, about materials? Well, I think this center is a big challenge, you know, to things that we are creating you know, all those, you know, so I, I, I don't know, I guess, like I told, you know, it's important to look, I, I like, the, I, I think a design needs to observe things, hidden things, you know, that normally people doesn't see, you know, banality, you know, I think this is important to, you know, with the idea to transform, to reuse, I don't know whether if I will answer her question in order because yeah uh, um, yeah it's, it's, it's I see also you know high technology but also a dialogue between high technology and also the handmade you know I think the handmade will never will be uh, forgotten you know because it's part of the human being the emotion you know that a machine can. Even a sophisticated machine can transform this, you know, to, to express that feeling thing. Yes, it's very clear that uh, in your process, the, the contact, the physical contact with the materials in the design process itself 
um, is very important. 